Good morning and welcome to our Living Word Home Church service. I hope you're doing well. I'm Pastor Benny. And if you're joining us for the first time, thank you for being a part of this time with us as we learn and grow in God's Word together. Amen. Well, today, folks, we're going to conclude our series on pre-decide, but our theme is going to be start to finish. Amen. But before we get started, let's just bow our heads and pray. Let's enter the Lord's presence. Amen. Father, we just thank you this day, Lord, for the promise that your word would not be returned void. We ask you to search our heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and bless us beyond measure, Lord, with your blessings right now, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, start to finish. You know, struggles are meant to be worked through, so don't give up. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, the NLT version. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. That's right, folks. God loves us and has equipped us. When you want to give up, don't. Be patient. Wait. Trust. Remember, whatever God started in us, he will finish it. There may be reasons, a lot of reasons we may have to think that we should give up. To give up our goals, our dreams, our visions, our relationship, etc. And many times we get hit right as we get started. Right out, the, right out of the gate. We get hit with resistance, challenges, and even doubts. But many other times, we stall because we see little or no progress, and so we get discouraged, and we feel like giving up. Well, let me tell you a story about me. You know, the first time I ever wanted to give up. It was early in my Christian walk. I wasn't saved long, but I wanted to leave the church. I wanted to leave my, my Christian walk entirely, altering my faith, even for just a brief moment. Briefly, while I was, you know, what I, while I fought these emotions. And let me tell you, it was a fight. I had to resist and endure through those raging emotions as I painfully and patiently waited for the Lord to do His work in me. You know, as I slept on it, the Lord gave me a dream, a powerful vision and a clear interpretation of, his, of this dream regarding the battle I was having. It was pretty amazing, let me tell you. It transformed my entire outlook. The reason for, let me just tell you the reason for wanting to quit in the first place. It was because of this one pastor in our church. He had a construction company and I was in need of one. We had this major project of renovating this three-story building, which we had just acquired from the city. And like I said, I was still uh, in my 
early walk in my faith and and I was still trying to sort out things and and letting go of a lot of my past and trust issues was one of them. So when I, I met this pastor, well, I, it gave me a sense of peace. You know, I figured he's a godly man, right? And what could go wrong? So I, I hired him. You know, we hired him. And, and, and he started the renovations of the building, which, you know, we had purchased. And it was, it was going fine. You know, like most things do in the beginning. We all have, we were just like halfway through the project when out of nowhere, the money issue became a problem. Up to that point, things were just working fine. And so, looking back, you know, I realized that he had the same problem I did. A lack of trust in people. You know, he wanted us to just pay him the balance of the project, which was nowhere near completed. It was impossible to pay him because the only way to pay him was through the loan which we were, had acquired from the city. And there were requirements to that. The agreement was that when he finished a section of the project, we would go to the bank together, the owners and the contractor, and then we would sign showing proof that the work has been done, and then we would get the money, and then we could pay him. As per agreement. Which was uh, what we had been doing all along. And one day he decided he wasn't going to sign unless we gave him the money up front. I felt he was trying to extort us. I was livid. How dare this guy try to swindle me, threatening me, saying he wouldn't sign if I didn't give him the money up front. Every impulse in my own nature wanted to surface. The level of restraint was beyond me. Him not signing meant that he would, we wouldn't be able to finish the project in the time where we were supposed to. It would also put us in a position to have to pay off the, what we all had already borrowed so far while having no income coming in to pay for it. On top of that, it would take months, if, a, if not a year, to resubmit the paperwork and to find another contract and to go over that all over again. The worst part, was my partner who wasn't saved at the time. And he was the one who was putting up most of the money. And I was the one that suggested this guy. This pastor, this man of God was my idea. He was the one, the pastor of the church. He was one of the pastors of the church. I couldn't believe it. I recommended him. Because I believed that could be, he could be trusted. So... This was my responsibility. Folks, it's easy to start something, but hard to finish. This idea is more important than most people understand. Think of relationship we start. In the beginning, they start off as if nothing can go wrong. But it's a lot harder to follow through and finish. As many have learned. Fighting for a marriage and running out of fight for it. Believing in a miracle, healing, finances, addiction, or even for your children. Believe me, it takes endurance to persevere. We have to be patient with the process. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23, NLT version. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Folks, hold on to the hope we say we have. And that's what I had to do. Hold on to the hope he promised. When I accepted Jesus, I remember sitting in my car praying. Here's the dilemma. I didn't trust people, but I had to trust God. And I hearing God, him saying to me that moment to trust him. He said, do you believe me? Do you believe I saved you? I couldn't deny that. But that night when I went to bed really troubled, 
When I woke up the next day, I was at peace. He gave me a dream I would never forget and a revelation I could fully understand. I understood what it meant. I want you to turn your book to the book of um, Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 36, the NLT version. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. You know, another translation of that verse is that we need to be patient and strong. Then he will be able to continue to do well what we will be able to do what God wants and experience the results God has promised. But let me just tell you about the dream that night. The dream was two men facing the same exact battle. One of them were, uh, was big, strong, and powerful. The other was wise, very smart, and patient. They were both in a face-to-face -face confrontation to which approach to take to handle the battle. The big strong wanted to sort of use the physical strength, but the smart wise wanted to wait and work it out another way. They were in a conflict, in a, in a bypass. But it turned out, when I got the revelation that they were both the same person, they were both me. And it taught me that there's a, a time and a place and a way for everything. So we went to the signing. And at that signing, the contractor sends his assistant. He doesn't even show up with the same threat that if we didn't give him the money, they won't be signing. But I was at peace. This was the time to wait on the Lord and trust him. And I was okay with that. I said to them, do what you have to do. It turns out that they, you know, they turned around and signed and they, they got paid after we got the money. But you know what? That pastor and I became close friends after all of that, believe it or not. We worked together in ministries and outreaches for years after that, until he retired. He was truly a man of God. He had done so much work for the Lord in the city of New York, more than anyone I know. I truly respect him. We have to remember that struggles are meant to be worked through. It helps us to develop. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 3 to 4, the Amplified Version. And not only this, but joy. But with joy, let us exalt our, in our suffering and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patient endurance and endurance proven character. Spiritual maturity and proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Folks, God has a plan and a purpose for everything. As we conclude this, our series with pre decide, start to finish, endure to persevere and be patient. Throughout these messages, you've heard it said that the quality of our decision determines the quality of our life. Not everything is going to make sense right away. Some things we have to wait and pray for. This week, tell someone, confess to someone that you believe and trust in God's promises. Put it out there with all to see. With all that's going on right now in life and the world around us, the level of violence and crime and corruption is out of control. Only our faith in Christ can help us. So put it out there. I want you to turn your Bible right now to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, and I'm using the NLT version. 
For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So when you want to give up, pray. Be ready. Be consistent, devoted, generous, faithful. Be a finisher. What do you think separates a, an average person from an amazing person? Would you say it's a, one who is fulfilled versus one who's empty? Or one who is successful versus one who struggles? Folks, it's not intelligence, appearance, talent, education, who or what you know. Perseverance drives us to finish and refuses to quit. That's it. That's what we call grit. I love Westerns, and they use the word grit to describe strength of character. Someone who, who does not refuse or refuses to quit. Why do you think successful people succeed? It's because they are driven and they don't give in to their fear of failure or the struggles they face. Failure is a part of success. We need to learn how to navigate through that process. Listen to what Paul tells Timothy. If you turn to your Bibles right now to the second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5 through 7, the easy reversion. But you yourself must continue to think seriously and clearly. He says, be patient and brave when trouble comes. He says, continue to tell the good news about Christ to people. He said, do all the work that God has given you to do as his servant. As, you, as for me, it is nearly time for me to die. My death will be like a drink offering that they pour out to God. He said, my life as God's servants will end. I have worked to serve Christ well. I have finished everything that God wanted me to do. I am like a runner who has run to the end of the race. I have continued to believe God's true message. In other words, if we're not dead, we're not done. There is more to do, folks. More love to give, more people to help. Whether it's through your ministry, your business venture, your vision to create, whatever it is, God has a plan for you, a hope to share. God's got more for us to do. Turn to someone. Look in the mirror. Tell yourself, God has more for you to do. Whatever, wherever we go, we are the church. And here's an ouch moment. Much of the stress that people feel doesn't come from having too much to do. It comes from not finishing what they started. Want to hear that again? The Apostle Paul said he finished the race. Think for a moment about what we haven't finished. I'm not talking about finishing the fourth season of Breaking Bad on Netflix or any other series on Netflix. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 1 through 2, the Amplified Version. The angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, a reputation that you are alive. But in reality, you are dead. Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains of your, of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have found, I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of God, of my God, or meeting his requirements. I want you to go through that scripture thoroughly. What is he saying? to the church in Sardis. 
First of all, he says that the seven spirits is another name for the Holy Spirit, and the seven stars refers to messengers, the leaders of the churches. But the church of Sardis looked so good on the outside, but it was corrupt and rotten on the inside. And there's no judgment here, folks. We are here to learn and grow in God's Word. But folks, this is not about just looking good. God's Word says that we have unfinished business. What should you say is our unfinished business? Are we about our Father's business? What will we say is a distraction to finishing what God started in us? How do we finish the race God calls us to run? Remember, we don't have to finish today. Predecide. When you commit, you don't quit. When you feel you just got to go on, you can't just go on anymore. What happens when you just want to just give up? Well, take another step. Say another prayer. Make another call. Give another gift. Send another email. Memorize another scripture verse. Take another lesson. Run another mile. Dream another dream. Whatever it takes, do. And do not quit. When you commit, you don't quit. Remember, you are, you are not in it alone. I want you to turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, the easy read version. I know that God has begun to do good things in you. And I am sure that he will continue to work in you. Then, on that day, on the day when Jesus Christ returns, his work in you will be finished. You may have seen me struggle. You may have seen me fail and even lose a game, but you, will, you have never seen me quit. Folks, pre-decide. When we commit, we don't quit. We finish. Start to finish, folks. If you're here today and you've been struggling with something, whatever it may be, that you feel like you need to quit or give up, I want to be able to pray with you right now. I want you to bow your heads right now. Father, we just pray. In whatever the battle is right now, we're going to learn to trust you. We're going to learn to persevere, to endure, to be, to trust in you and put our hope and faith in you, Lord. Give us the courage and strength we need right now to overcome whatever battles come. Whatever it is that we're struggling right now, we ask you to take it on. We lay, we lay it at your altar right now, asking you to have your way. We thank you for this victory this day, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the same said, amen and amen. Remember, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Please join us right after this as we go to do our Q&A discussion on livingword.nyc. And be a part of this time. You can ask questions. You can actually discuss what your thoughts are. And we would love to have you. So please come and, and join us. Amen. Remember, God is good. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care.